Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be looking at the actual build video of the G90 HF Go Box slash solar generator. And uh, just want to touch on one thing real quick. A lot of people have asked, why did I not put a Raspberry Pi in here for digital? Well, two reasons. One, I don't really care about digital that much. I just don't find it uh, all that entertaining. The thought of doing it out in the field just sounds even more boring to me. Yes, JS8 Call is a fantastic mode uh, if the stuff were to actually hit the fan. So that's the main reason I just don't do a lot of digital at all, even at home. Um, the other reason, there's just not a lot of room for it. Uh, yes, you could put a Raspberry Pi right here. Definitely not underneath. There's not a lot of room at all. Um, you might could fit all the little connectors in there somewhere. There's a little bit of room under here. That's kind of about it, so your mileage may vary. Um, but I also just didn't want to add more than what I already had. This is the box that I wanted to build. The idea is to inspire you, build your own box. Really anything else in this though, you're gonna need a bigger box, you're gonna need a bigger battery. So I wanted to keep it as small and compact while still functional at the same time. So that's kind of where my mindset was when building this. So another thing to note, uh, my cheap $17 Chinese solar charge controller didn't produce any noise when I had it connected to the solar panel outside of the box. Uh, I got nothing, but when it's inside here crammed in, it does produce a little bit of RF, uh, which I guess is kind of to be expected because it's literally that far away from the radio. And the USB also produces a little bit of noise when it's on. So. Not as perfect as I was hoping, but this is the first time build. You know, maybe I can change it to some better parts or something. I'm not sure how, because this is so small. But uh, either way, first time build. I'm very pleased with the overall way this turned out. And even if I had to turn the radio off and charge it for a little bit, it still works. So like I said, not perfect. If any of you guys know of any way that I could shield this maybe, uh, maybe leave a, a comment down below and I'd, I'd like to try that because I still would like to keep everything in here. The first half of this video roughly is more just the fabrication, if you will. We'll use that term loosely. The second half, if you want to skip ahead, is more like all the wiring and stuff. So you can skip ahead and watch that or whatever. Uh, hopefully you watch the whole thing, but that's about it. Without any further ado, we'll get right into it. Oh, by the way, if you like this video or any of my other videos, do us a favor. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. You can also hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter, at k at I want to show you how I kind of prototyped this. There's already a few things that I know I'm going to move. I'm going to move the power pole and this switch down a little bit. All of this side is going to stay the same. The reason I'm moving this down is because I'm still not sure whether I want to put the coax connector here or if I want to drill it into the side. Because right now, if I just put the coax here, when I close this box, everything's still waterproof. So I'm still on the fence on that. Plus, everything is really, really tight underneath here. All of this stuff on top is spaced. Basically, the battery is sitting right here. The radio is underneath this. So I can't really put anything here. Everything is kind of where, <laughs> where it fits. So this, I'm going to move down a little bit. I still have to figure out how I'm going to mount this head. I don't want this sitting flat. My idea is I want to have it be able to tilt so it's resting right on the edge of this. And that'll give me a good viewing angle when I'm at a, you know, a park bench or something. Because right there, you're not going to really be able to see. So uh, I got to figure out a way to make some, some hinges and a way for this to stay rigid. Because when the mic cord pulls on this, I don't want to have to be fighting with it but I need to collapse it back down in order for it to clear the lid, which is why this is recessed in a little bit. So I'll take this out and show you what it looks like, and then I'm gonna disassemble everything and uh, we'll get to work on this. So clearly I just kind of prototyped this with cardboard. I'm gonna cut these out and, and uh, I've got some plexiglass that I'm actually gonna make them out of. But you can see there's all kinds of wires. This is the six amp bio one. I mean, we'll see all this a little bit later, but it's kind of a nightmare right now, and I'll hopefully tighten it up a little bit. But everything is just super, super packed uh, inside of here. There's not much room for anything. So we'll see how she goes. So here's a quick shot of uh, the nightmare of wires. I kind of just strung it all together just to see if it would work. So everything's disassembled now. And I'm measuring my top and bottom plates, we'll call them. I'm going to cut them out of this 
plexiglass that I got from Home Depot. These are about, I don't know, five fifty each. I'm doing everything in metric. So the top is 23 by 30.7 centimeters. The bottom is about 30.2 centimeters-ish. I'm gonna cut this big. If I put a T here, I put a B on the other one for top and bottom. So now my top is gonna be 30.7 centimeters. And 23. So this looks pretty good. We can see there's a gap on the top, kind of gaps on all sides, but that's because it, it gets a little bit uh, thinner as you get to the bottom. So now I need to do the radius. And I'm going to use this, uh, this is a three-quarter Schedule 40 cap for PVC pipe. And I'm just going to put this, I'm going to mark, uh, it's a pretty good match to the radius inside of here. So I'm just going to mark the corners and kind of shave them down a little bit to get a radius. And as you can see, that fits pretty darn well. The other thing I didn't account for is this little dingle right here. So I'm going to cut a notch. Uh, just so I can slide it in once it's all together because it, it's just you just slide it from top down yeah and now we attempt to not screw up the top piece So the top piece took me a little bit longer than the bottom. I, I just, I really wanted to get perfect, so I took my sweet time. But now it just kind of falls in, which is perfect. I want it to be a little loose. I want to have a little bit of air gap around there. So now I want to drill holes in the bottom there. And I'm going to use this washer to kind of make the mark where I'm going to drill. So now I'm gonna take my bolts, I'm gonna put a washer on the bottom, stick it up through the back, put another washer on, and then a nut. Voila. So now we've got that done. Put this guy on top, and we can mark. One, two, three, a four. And now if we're lucky, this should fit. Hey, it does, look at that. The next thing I wanna do is mount the body to the bottom tray. But we need to be mindful of the coax and this dumbest idea in the world connector. We've gotta have clearance because I'm actually gonna fold this back and kind of wrap this around. And I'll probably zip tie it somewhere here. But we've gotta also watch out for the coax. I also want to get it as close to the edge as possible because our battery is going to sit here and uh, we got some wiring and things that are going to take up this space. What we're going to use, I found at Lowe's, they're these uh, kind of L brackets. That's, the, that's what they are. So I'm going to cut these in half. How I'm going to mount these, I'm going to use the screws on the body of the radio to mount the brackets to the radio and then I'm going to use some... Uh, tiny little uh, nuts and bolts to drill and screw uh, mount onto this bottom bracket. I'm gonna cut this right down the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that. So now we've got them cut. And I'm gonna mark around the four sides of the radio. because I'm actually gonna turn this over. I want all these brackets to actually go underneath the radio. I'm gonna mark just kinda the edge of the radio a little bit because I'm going to flip this all over in a second. I'm going to put these on the body of the radio first, and then I'm going to flip it over and mark it, and then we'll drill our holes.
Oh, they got little piddle paws. This is also going to raise it up a little bit because they put the heat sink on the bottom, which is really stupid. So it won't just be resting on the plastic. And then this is a Phillips head. Pretty slick, huh? Now I can make my mark for where I want to drill. Now I'm gonna take the feet we just made off, mount them to the plexiglass, and then we'll screw these back in. I got some little uh, nuts and washers. I'm just gonna put a little lock, lock washer on the bottom. And then that goes like that. So we'll screw these in. Look at that. Now I just put the bolts on. We're gonna mock this up. The top plate is actually gonna rest right on top of this battery. So I'm gonna adjust the bottom screws. I got them pretty low, so I'm just gonna raise them up until they kinda just touch the surface underneath there. And that'll give us our level platform. And this way I can start laying things out I'm not screwing the battery in yet, because you can see this is the hole where that stupid cable is going to come out of. So I need to shift the battery over a little bit. So it has some clearance, so I'm going to cut a hole there. Alright, so I've just mock laid out all the bits and pieces. And I'm just going to mark with a sharpie where I'm going to put everything. I found that a nickel is pretty much just a touch bigger than the size of the... Uh, switches so I'm going to use these as markers and I'm just going to mark I'm going to drill a hole for these wires to go through the board and then I'll have the switches right next to them a USB outlet precision engineering here and this I'm just going to mark the top and bottom because it's skinnier and then I'll have to get the width when I start routing. Hold on to your butts. Doesn't got to be pretty. It's just got to fit. And there's one. This guy, I know it's too narrow. This is the good width, though, so I'm just going to cut this width. I'm going to cut this square out. And then I'm just going to gradually make it bigger until I can get to these little clippy things and it snaps in nice and firm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. The last thing we got to cut is the stupid hole for this cable. So I'm going to use my template and uh, kind of just mark out where it should be. This isn't so crucial. It doesn't have to be exact because all I want to do is stick this stupid thing through there. So I'm just going to cut it. Let's see. Somewhere there, 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 there. Yes, and it goes in. Now the last thing we gotta do is just drill the holes for our meters so we can stick the wires underneath. So one of the last things I need to do before I paint this and wire it all up is mount this head. This has been something that I've been trying to figure out exactly how I wanna design this since like the, the first thought came to my mind that I wanted to make this build. I knew that I wanted to have this head swivel up and be right on the edge of the case but i couldn't figure out how to do it and uh very special thanks to don kk4qam and adam k6ark for kind of helping me figure this out i was really just overthinking it the solution actually turned out really well i i am using the parts that i initially bought for this which is really cool what i'm doing is i'm using this little l bracket that has 
uh, a bigger groove here and then just a circle there. And I'm also using these guys. These are like half inch by three inch. Just, I don't even know what it's called. I'll, I'll have links in the description for this stuff. But um, I basically just broke these in half. They break pretty easily. I put them in a vise and I'll show you the back here. I have to make new ones of these. I just did this just to test, but they fit. The radius of that fits so perfectly in here. I do need to grind this down because it sits a little high on here. And when I close the case, it's hitting the, the button there. So I need to lower that just a touch. This I'm leaving loose because as it pivots, the bottom of this needs clearance. When it does that, it's got to be able to move up and down. So I'll probably just put two nuts in here to keep that from unscrewing. But that way I can have this fold up. You got to have the kickstand though because I want to be able to push the buttons and stuff without it falling down. So I'm going to mark the holes for that, drill it, and then I'm going to take everything out and paint the bottom of this and wire it all up. So I'm just going to try and mark these where I want it because I'm not good at measuring and stuff. There's definitely enough clearance, just enough to get the microphone in there. I already checked. So I can kind of highlight this a little. I can at least rest it on there and make it a hole there something like that I'm gonna line these up perfectly I'm gonna mark this I'm also going to use a couple of these L brackets uh, one here and one here just to prevent the battery from sliding around the USB port that goes way back here will actually prevent this from sliding that way this I'm not too concerned about it being overly accurate. If it, it It's pretty tight even without this when I close the lid and everything, so it doesn't slosh around too much. I've taken everything apart after drilling uh, before drilling these holes, and uh, the reason is the next step, I'm going to peel the plastic off of this. I'm going to paint the underside of this. I got a cool uh, like metallic silver paint, and then I'm going to focus on the head unit. We're going to get... Uh, I really need to just make these brackets perfect to get at the right pitch. And then I'm going to take my angle grinder and grind these down to make them thinner. All right, so I peeled the plastic off, got some painter's tape on the other side, uh, just because. And I've got some Krylon Fusion Metallic Silver. It's got like these metallic flecks in it, which I thought was pretty cool. Now while we're waiting for our paint to dry, I'm going to make the uh, kickstands uh, out of this bar. And what's going to happen is this is going to fit in here. And I'm going to cut it right where the bar goes here, which I've measured from the bottom here to here is 2.9 centimeters. So I'm going to cut these to 2.9 centimeters. And then I'm going to uh, shave them down so, they're, uh, so they don't stand up as high. And it actually looks like if I just cut this right in half, that should be that should be perfect enough, and I can do any fine tuning with my grinder. I'm actually just going to break this with my vise because it actually works so well. Why not? Just push, and they just break so easily. So this is kind of like it was meant to be. This little nub right here is absolutely perfect for stopping this when it gets in there. So I don't know if I can show it on camera, but you can kind of see that little nub there stopping it. So what I have to do is I'm, I'm putting this in here flush with that, and I'm just going to mark the top, and that's where I need to grind to. I'm actually not going to go quite to that because... The screw hole's right there. <laughs> Not much clearance, but uh, if, if I even cut off like three quarters of that, uh, we should be golden. That looks pretty good. Rounded off this back a little bit. I've got a sanding wheel I can get all these burrs off. Now I've got them clamped together. You can see they're a little bit different in size, so I'm just gonna grind them down, make them the same uh, height. 
Now I'll throw on this metal sanding wheel. And now they're nice and smooth. And now the part that we've all been waiting for. This part kind of sucks. This is really tight to get in. It's working. It's working. I'm going to put another nut on there. And there we have it. That's pretty perfect. And then we do it again. Yeah, look at that. And the whole purpose of grinding these down, you can see how much closer this is to bottoming out now. This was probably another eighth of an inch higher than that. And that's how little bit of tolerance I have between the top of this knob and the, and the bottom of the lid. I just want to give you a close up of this because I don't think I'll be able to do it while I'm installing. This is the L bracket that I'm going to use that's actually going to allow this to pivot. But I need this to be cut out like this because you can't just pivot a square. It bottoms out right here. So this needs to have a little bit of play to move up and down a little bit so we can rotate this and then kick our legs out. So that is how it's going to sit. All right, that's about it for getting all the parts together. Now it's time to put everything together, wire it up, and we got ourselves a go box. The first thing we gotta do is install the feet that the G90 are going to go in, the brackets, if you will. And we'll tighten them down a bit. And we've also gotta put in the brackets for the battery. Now we install the radio. This is a really tight fit here. That's good. Ah, yes, beautiful. Now I'm gonna add our four feet, we'll call them, for the dividers between the bottom layer and the top layer, four washers, and four nuts. I'm going to tighten these down a bit. And now it's time to wire everything up. Look how beautiful that turned out, huh? I ended up putting two coats of paint on this and just letting it dry uh, pretty much for 24 hours. And that turned out absolutely wonderful. I'm very pleased with this. So let's pop in our components and get going. All right, so we've got a few different kinds of connections we're gonna make. First, I'm going to introduce the solar charge controller. So we're going to go from these top right power poles into the solar in for the charge controller. That's going to connect to that. This is the source side of the watt meter. I'm going to be hooking a few things up to this. It'll all make sense eventually. Now I need to put some power poles on this guy because I made this so small. I'm just gonna take this out really quick. There we are. This guy back in. Now I'm gonna put the power poles from here to here. This top one is how I'm gonna charge it just with my charger at home. And I wanna have these completely separate because I don't wanna be sending, uh, the solar charge controller won't work uh, with a regular home charging station because this wants to see 18 volts. So we've gotta use two different circuits for it. So that is why we have to go through all this. All right, so now we can hook this up and complete the circuit. So this is a little kind of wiring harness I made up. So we've got 
the power coming from the switch through the circuit. Uh, this red lead is going to the barrel connector that's going to connect to the battery. And then we have our two grounds. So we're going to connect our power pole, our switch power, the battery power, and our ground. And that circuit is complete. And now when we hook this up to the battery, throw the switch, everything will work. I'll show you. And the reason we have to wire it this way is if the battery's hooked up, Without a switch in line, it's just going to always stay on. So there you go, 14.3 volts. When we have power coming in, though, it's going to flow through the circuit and into the battery. This top and all everything on top is just for charging. Now we need to start wiring up what I'll call the station power. So the first thing we're going to do, this is the wiring harness that I made up. This is going to plug directly into the power pole on the battery. So this is just going to kind of be dangling here for a while. Our red is going to go to the center of our switch. And I've got the ground going to the ground. And this lead here is going to connect. This is the source side of the station power meter. And then I have a single wire, single red wire that's going to connect to the source side of our hot. Now we're going to start connecting the load side. So I'm going to twist our ground wires together, throw a wire nut on it, and then we're going to add a fuse. This is way too big. In the description I'll have a smaller one, uh, just smaller gauge. But this is what I had on hand, so this is what we're using. Don't cross the streams. We can also cover this up because we are done with this wire. And we're also done with these. These are just the source wires. Everything else is going to be coming off of these two wires. So this is our main uh, positive and negative. Now I'm going to hook up all the positives. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got this little jumper uh, to go from both of the positive power poles into our switch, and that's going to go on this bottom one, just like that. Then we have a jumper that's going to go from the center of both of the switches that also has a lead that's going to connect to our main power. So we'll jump these guys here. This will connect here in a minute. And I also have a power pole. This is what's actually going to connect to the power to the radio. So we'll go ahead and connect all three of these. And then lastly, we just have this jumper to go from our USB switch to the actual socket itself. So we'll connect that little booger. And now all of the positive leads are connected. Now we'll connect all of our negatives. So I've got three negative wires connected, two with power poles, one end stripped. And there. And then lastly, we've got our two ground wires connected. And this is going to go from our main ground to the switch to the USB outlet. And then we also need to connect the negative for the power pole for the radio. And that is a completed wiring. And if we want to test it out, I've got to put a fuse in. I'm using a 15 amp fuse just because I don't really anticipate drawing any more current than that. I'm going to flip it over, plug in our connections. We've already confirmed that that works. So that's good. Now we flip this switch. We should have power to everything. Got power down here. Flip that. Power here. Our red lights are on. It's a go. Now we're going to attach our L bracket to the head. So I'm going to put a washer on the screw. Insert a lock washer. 
and a nut. I want this to have some play, so I'm going to leave this loose, and we're going to use another nut to lock that in place. There. That way this can wiggle. And then we do it again. Now she's ready to go in. So we've got to kind of finagle these screws in here, kind of to the side. And we're going to drop this in to the plate and bolt them up from underneath. just to lock it. So the head unit gave me a little bit of trouble. I ended up having to actually take one of the nuts from this side and put it over on the other side to use as a spacer because my screws are too long. And that way that allows this to stick up and kind of get out of the way. So not ideal and not how I really wanted it to happen, but that's okay, it still works. Underneath, you can see the screw head resting on the battery, which is not ideal. And I ended up having to lower this bit. So the whole, the whole thing is kind of slanted this way, uh, which kind of just, it bothers my OCD. It doesn't affect anything and you don't notice it when it's in the box. But um, ideally, I would get a flat screw for that and maybe recess it in here. But this is what we're working with. And as I've been playing with this a little bit since I got this head unit on, I noticed that sharp metal on plastic could potentially scratch it. So I just coated this with a thin layer of liquid electrical tape. I don't know if it'll last very long, but it took all of about five seconds to apply. So if I need to put more on later, I can. So the two biggest things that were kind of like the hardest for me to figure out was how I wanted to mount the head unit. And I'm pretty happy with the way this works. I played with it and it's, it's pretty rigid. Um, you know, I can push the buttons and everything and it, it doesn't really move, so that's good. And lastly was coax. I was thinking of drilling through the side of the box, but then I realized if I have a bulkhead in here, I can't put this in. I'd have to drill out this and I kind of liked the idea of just keeping the box completely sealed. So I have one of these barrel connectors for BNC and I'm gonna screw it right there on the top so I can just plug an antenna in when I open the box. And I have just the right amount of room in here. There's not much uh, to make it happen. So that is what I'm gonna do with the coax. Yahtzee! All right, so final assembly. We've got uh, our nuts and washers screwed on here. And we are going to carefully put this on like such. Got our little head connector in here. I'm gonna put some washers over here and our nuts. I'm gonna leave these, I'm just gonna put them on. I'm gonna leave them loose because we'll have to make some final adjustments. Make our power cord attachments and our coax. We've got to take this guy off to get the power lead in. Like that. Then we can put it back on. Perfect. And then this can just tuck in here. Here's our power pole to connect to the radio. And then I've got this little pigtail, thanks to Scott, AC8IL for making this for me because I didn't have the right size crimper to do this BNC. There. Put the battery in. Connect our power poles. Connect our barrel connector. And this baby's wired up and ready to go in the box. And finally, we drop it in. Just like that. Ta-da! And that is how I built 
my Zygu G90 HF Go Box slash solar generator. Thanks so much for watching another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff 73.